Since the beginning of Psychonauts, stories of a giant lake monster were told around the camp. Bobby frightened Dogen with this campfire tale. Mikael searched for this hairless bear to wrestle, and according to Elton, the fish in the lake were frightened of something giant. While these come off as scary stories told at every camp, once the counselors go missing, Rasputin comes face to face with this hulking lungfish. The creature abducts Lily and takes her under the lake. This lake monster should be recognized as the demon figure that Raz confronts during the brain tumbler experiment. Unlike previous Psychonauts videos, this one will be broken up into two separate sections. One will explore Lungfishopolis and the mindscape of the creature. The second will focus on what the hulking lungfish represents within the narrative and Rasputin's journey. Because I brought it up during the brain tumbler experiment, let us begin with the latter. The first time we see a shadowy version of this creature is during the first visit through the brain tumbler. The barrier could not be passed until Raz learned how to fight. After being trained in Psyblast by Sasha, Raz is able to confront and pass this threshold. When the boy meets Linda for real, it presents another barrier for him to cross. Within the hero's journey, the first threshold is a stepping off point. It represents the gate between the known world and the unknown world. Upon passing the demonic figure, sensors finally appear to provide a sense of danger once the known world is left behind. Before the start of the game, the ordinary world was the one Rasputin occupied in the traveling circus. After receiving a pamphlet to the summer camp, he answered the call to adventure and set off into the unknown world of Whispering Rocks. Over the course of basic braining, Sasha's shooting gallery and Mia's dance party, Raz came full circle with his abilities and became comfortable within the camp. The world that was previously unknown is now familiar. The summer camp has become his new ordinary world. Now there is a second threshold to cross, the one between the camp and Thorny Tower's home for the disturbed. Lake Umblingada itself acts as the threshold. In literature, it is common to have a body of water, such as the River Styx, act as a barrier between worlds. Unlike the transition from circus to camp, however, this barrier is guarded by a threshold guardian. Linda the Lungfish acts as an obstacle that must be overcome in order to pass through. In Rasputin's case, this is literal. The Aquato family is cursed so that whenever they approach water, the hand of Galoccio appears to drown them. Once cured, Linda acts as the ferryman, taking Raz back and forth across the threshold safely. But before that, we must get to the bottom of what is causing Linda's aggressive actions and causing her to abduct the campers and carry them across the lake. Up to this point, the mindscapes have been from the perspective of a human psyche. As a result, the absurdity of Linda's mind is to be expected. All things considered, the thriving metropolis that Raz finds is relatively normal. The monstrous exception is that Rasputin has grown to the size of skyscrapers. This is due to how Linda perceives the boy. Like most animals under normal circumstances, they would see a human as a giant stomping around and destroying anything it steps on. Even with her abnormalities, Linda still views Rasputin as a giant. Agent Cruller even informs him that she is more afraid of him than he is of her. Getting back to the reason behind Linda's transformation, a clue can be found within the mental vaults of the world. One that shows the external cause and one showing the internal effects. The vault Lungfish and Lobato shows the genesis of Linda's transformation. It depicts a mad doctor abducting a normal lungfish and performing experiments on her. This lungfish is altered physically into the hulking lungfish, and a mind control device was placed in her head. In Lungfishopolis Under Siege, we see how Linda's mindscape was before the psychological programming. At first, it was simply a natural ocean scene filled with life. Oleander projected himself down in the form of Cochamara and began to manipulate the population. Over time, the natural ocean mindscape was paved over with concrete and skyscrapers into an Orwellian metropolis. Most fell under Kochamara's control, only a few rebelled. After completing and returning to the level, we learn the city is scheduled for reforestation, bringing the mind back into a normal balance. 
You may smash it all. This whole area is scheduled for reforestation. Cochemera built this city for us. Lungfish weren't meant to live in cities. Upon entering the Mindscape, he finds a civilization of lungfish going about their lives in this 21st century society. The story of this world is straightforward. The mind control device presents itself as a radio antenna that broadcasts propaganda to the citizens. Most of the lungfish comply with the directives given to them, while the few who rebel against it are incarcerated. Rasputin's role is to travel through the city, defeat Kochamara, and destroy the radio tower with the assistance of the Freedom Fighters. The mind control device created these mental constructs, so once they are removed, the implant fails and Linda's mind is free to be her own again. At the end of the day, Lungfishopolis is a mental world that depicts a population forced to obey the directives of a third party. The characters within it represent different parts of Linda's mind and how she copes with the implant. The lungfish figures are broken into four primary categories, all of which relate back to a concept conceived by the philosopher Plato, known as the Allegory of the Cave. Imagine, if you will, a cave where people are imprisoned, chained so that their legs and necks are fixed. This forces them to look at the cave wall, but are unable to see anything else. Behind them is a tall block wall that hides figures walking back and forth that are carrying puppets. Behind that is a fire that casts shadows on the walls the prisoners are forced to watch. As the puppeteers are behind the wall, their bodies cannot be seen, only the shadow images. To the prisoners, the shadows are all they know about their world, as it is the only thing that they can see. According to Plato, this can either be their perception of reality or doctrines imposed upon the citizen by the nation-state. In Lungfishopolis, the majority of the characters Razmeets are the average citizens. Comparing them to the allegory, they are the prisoners bound and watching the shadow play. Upon entering the metropolis, a cutscene plays showing a mother crossing the street. A crossing guard asks how her day is going. And what are you and the wee one up to on this lovely day? Oh, just obeying the law as always. All posted directives followed to the letter. They are the part of Linda's mind that is fully under the control of the neural implant. Refusing to go against the directive given by Oleander and Lobato's psychological programming, they blindly follow the propaganda. Like the prisoners, their entire world is based upon the shadows on the wall. Shadows cast by the mind control device. Coach Oleander and Dr. Lobato are the puppeteers in this allegory, creating the world that the lungfish see. The shadows themselves make an appearance in multiple ways. Figments largely display billboards meant to influence the citizens. Even those as innocent as advertising sandwiches and tacos show images of the campers mixed in with the food, informing Linda to swallow them before taking them to Lobato. Others depict the wonders of Kachamara, glorifying the avatar of this deception, along with TV sets and antennas. Throughout the level, radio and news broadcasts will occasionally play, the contents of which tell the population within Linda's mind what to do and what to think. They even include subliminal messages to kidnap the campers and take them across the lake to Thorny Towers. Kidnapping human children is good. Kidnapping children do not harm the brains. In all cases, the broadcaster is Oleander putting on a fake voice. The world Linda finds herself in is completely manufactured by puppeteers she cannot see. Within the allegory, one of the prisoners breaks free, turns around, and is blinded by the fire. Some would return back to stare at the wall as it is more comfortable than the pain of the truth. Plato supposes that if the prisoner was forced from the cave and out into the sunlight, the individual would be blinded by the sun. However, after growing accustomed to it, this person would determine this world is better and more real than the false one in the cave. After returning to the cave to rescue the others, the freed prisoner is no longer acclimated to the dim light of the cave and cannot see. Witnessing this, the other prisoners assume that anything outside the cave must be dangerous. Plato concludes that the prisoners would fight against any attempt to take them from the cave, even go so far as to kill the one who is trying to help. The Freedom Fighters represent this in Lungfishopolis. Despite the neural implant, a part of Linda's mind is actively trying to resist the psychological programming. However, just like the prisoners fought against the one who escaped the cave, 
these recusant figures were imprisoned. The internal world created by the implant locked away any part of the mind that resists. Rasputin is contacted by the part of Linda that still wants to put up a fight. The more he breaks out of prison, the closer Linda comes to rejecting the program. Much like in the allegory, anyone who attempts to free the mind is met with resistance. The TV broadcasts portray him as a monster bent on total destruction, which calls upon the lungfish military to take him down. Even the average citizens cry out about the horrors inflicted upon them by Rasputin as he works to free them of their own mental chains. This relationship can be summed up by Key 15 of the Major Arcana, the Devil. Two figures are chained to a half cube. A full cube represents truth, while the half cube is by extension, half truth. Much like Kochamara, the Devil is the avatar of our own self-deception and holds us prisoner. However, if one looks closely, the chains around the prisoners' necks are so loose that they can easily pull off their bonds and escape if they recognize this and had the will to walk away. So the question is, if the imprisoned mind does not want to free itself, what do you do? The lungfish resistance wishes to convince the population through political pamphlets to pull off their chains. Rasputin takes a more direct path. If the prisoners in the cave will fight to the death to stay with shadows cast on the wall, then convincing them to leave won't work. The cave itself, or the half cube, will need to be destroyed. Raz travels to the island with the radio transmitter and defeats Kochamara, essentially evicting Oleander from the mind before destroying the tower. This causes the implant to fail and returns control back to Linda. In the allegorical sense, she has now left the cave into the sunlight. Linda gifts Rasputin with the Lungfish Call, a horn that will summon her. This way, he can be ferried back and forth between the known and the unknown world. Now, at the gates of Thorny Towers, Raz is on the path to rescue Sasha, Mia, and the rest of the campers. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please drop a like as it really does help out the channel. If you would like updates on new uploads, feel free to subscribe or follow me on Twitter. Have a good day and peace be with you all.